Thank you all for coming to the session. Uh, I'll be speaking about Zeus and mainly about the rise of SAS targeted attacks. Um, the last time I timed this uh, session, it took me about two hours, so I hope you're not too hungry. Uh, so I want to explain what are SAS targeted attacks. Uh, I'll show you a demonstration of how it exactly this looks like. And more importantly, I want to have a discussion with you what's so fundamentally lacking today with the, the security of SaaS applications. So a bit about me. I'm the CTO and co-founder of Adalom. Adalom is a security startup. And I represent here the Adalom Labs, which is a, a security group aimed at finding attacks against SaaS applications. We monitor user traffic and activities inside SaaS applications. We've been working together with many SaaS vendors uh, in order to find and together with them mitigate those attacks. Uh, we find several attacks. Uh, uh, most of them are yet undisclosed. I'll speak about two attacks. One of them was recently patched by Microsoft. And the second one uh, involves the Zeus, uh, which uh, I'll uh, show you a demonstration of. And it will, all the details will be available in a few weeks when they will finish uh, 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 fully patching it. So let's start. Uh, we'll talk, we have three phases. The first one, I want to explain what is a SAS targeted attack. OK? Uh, it's a new concept. It's important to understand what it is and why is it interesting. OK? In the second part, I'll actually demonstrate two attacks. And you will see exactly how a SA attack in a SAS world happens, and it, it is completely different than attacks we know on-premise. Everything we know on-premise is a bit different here in the SaaS world. So I'll show, show you two attacks we found, and then we'll move to the third part, which I think is the most important, trying to understand, together with you, what's so unique about those SaaS attacks, and I hope I'll be able to make the case why those SaaS attacks are so important and different, and why we need to learn their anatomy, and then we'll be able to understand how to mitigate them. So let's start. The word SaaS, as you've uh, probably uh, seen, uh, repeats uh, a lot in this uh, presentation, and it's not a mistake. Uh, it's not, there are many buzzwords in this topic. There's sometimes there's cloud, a word that I will not use because it is too um, ambiguous. SaaS specifically means software as a service, meaning people that interact directly with the service that the company receives from a third party. And this is fundamentally what changes how we interact with company resources. This change affects the fundamental concept of enterprise security and how we build security. And this is the reason why, and we'll see it in the talk, all the concepts we know about security change when we look at the security of our SaaS applications. Um, so we all know SaaS uh, is, is getting a lot of adoption. It, it becomes mainstream. Uh, if we look at the Forrester research, you can see that the market should be exploding. Uh, there are many uh, trends uh, that are in many uh, areas that are completely dominated by SaaS, like CRM and HR. Uh, and I would say that whether you know it or not, you probably have sensitive information inside your SaaS in your organization. Uh, and it's not only you that are starting to be aware of that. The attackers are also starting to understand that there's in interesting information there. And it's, I might say it's, a, it's trivial. Wherever there is interesting information and there's a, opportunities, the attacks will come. So that's not surprising. So there are so many attacks, like every day there's an interesting attack. So sometimes it's very hard to link the dots. But you might see that attacks against SaaS applications are starting uh, uh, to appear. Sometimes it's in the skies of hijacking a, a Twitter account, right? So like the AP attack a few months ago where it was reported that Obama was hurt. So actually it's, a, it's an, an attack against a SaaS account, right? If they can steal your Twitter account, they can probably hijack your Salesforce account or Google Apps account as well. The only difference is that in the case of Twitter account, you'll know about it. In the other cases, you won't know. And we've seen many interesting attacks, like another one that was published using Azus, uh, that they used Azus to uh, infiltrate uh, uh, the um, usage of a, a cloud payroll system. And they added fake employees to that system in order to steal money from the company. 
So again, compromising a SaaS system in order to steal money. And of course, to steal information. That's trivial, okay? Um, so the case that I want to make is that those attacks are not only stealing information from those SaaS applications. There's a fundamental problem in the way we view our SaaS applications and the, in the way we secure them, okay? And in order to, tr to help me explain this, uh, I'll try a, a thought experiment. It's like a math experiment. So try to uh, follow me and try to think of it as we talk about the attacks, okay? Um, so it, it goes like this. Imagine your organization as a, an overlay of two different organizations, your on-premise organization and your SaaS organization, okay? It's two organizations. They're both working together inside your organization, okay? Both have your entire organization in them. The on-premise organization has all the on-premise systems, and the SaaS organization has all the SaaS systems, okay? Can you follow this? Great, so you're doing a great job. Your on-premise organization, okay, is highly secure. It has a, a great security team. Uh, all the systems are completely managed. Uh, all the devices are managed and completely patched. There are no answer unpatched servers or devices. Uh, you have endpoint security, you have antiviruses, you have firewalls, you have IDSs and IPSs and WAFs, and you have a NAC system that you just finished to uh, install, and you have a monitoring capabilities, you have a SIM that collects all the logs, you have a SOX uh, team, really great security. You even do pen testing on your organization from time to time, great. But let's look at your other part of your organization. We will call it the SaaS organization. It's part of your organization. So let's look at this organization. It has the same users. All of your users are as part of this organization as well. But, first of all, it has a lot of shadow IT, a lot of systems that the IT do not know about and do not control. Second of all, we don't know which devices are in this organization. The, it has a lot of unmanaged, probably unpatched devices. We actually have no idea and no clue who are, which in these devices who is using what. It has no, most of these devices don't have antiviruses. They don't have firewalls. Uh, uh, no NAC, you don't have any network security, it's not even this uh, SaaS organization doesn't have a network, it's like everything is public networks, so you have no IDSs or IPSs, you have no monitoring solution for this uh, um, organization. You definitely don't have any pen testing for this organization. You, you actually, this organization is like an organization from the 90s. It has almost no security at all. Um, and from a security incidents point of view, you have hundreds of, of incidents in your on-premise organization and zero in your unprotected SaaS organization, right? So that's the case, uh, and I ask, is it really zero, okay? Uh, so let's uh, delve into two attacks. So that's, I'm, it's just a demonstration of two attacks we found. There are more attacks, the, uh, it's not, it's not really, it's really unlimited. I mean, if you look at the SaaS organization, it's un an unprotected organization. It's very easy to penetrate it. I'll just show you two examples of how easy it is, okay? It, it's not completely, it's not all the use cases possible. Great. So the first attack, we call it the landmine attack. Um, I, I won't be able to show all the details. On the 17th of February, we are allowed to share everything. Um, but I'll tell you the, I'll show you a demonstration of, and everything that's a, uh, uh, happening in this uh, account, what we saw and how it started. So we um, secured a Salesforce account, and we uh, noticed in one of the users a peak in the uh, user activities. Now, that's something that happens a lot. Sometimes just someone playing with a script, uh, sometimes he is getting ready to leave the company and just tries to take all the information, like uh, uh, what happened, uh, uh, if you remember the press node in the era with Bradley Manning, which he had a script, just downloaded many files from the SharePoint uh, uh, environment. So this happens. So we notified the SOC team, and they started to investigate. Something interesting that happened there, it was the device wasn't his office device. We saw it, it was an, uh, an XP with an unpatched Internet Explorer, and it, it was from his home location, okay? So they started investigating, and it, it turned out he said he has nothing to do with it. It turned out it was his wife's computer, okay? He was using it during weekends to access his Salesforce account, and that's great. Um, when we started investigating, uh, by the way, I don't have time to go, co to go into this, but it's an interesting question. What does a company have? What liability and what rights does he have to actually 
start doing forensics on his wife's computer, right? It's not a company-owned computer, but that's a, a side question, so we won't touch it. Uh, so what we found out on this wife's computer was a Zeus malware. Actually, the entire home, his kids' devices were also infected by Zeus malware, and I'll show you how the attack took place. So we actually, it's very easy to penetrate to an unpatched device. This was a device from, a, a, from the 90s, an XP with an unpatched Internet Explorer. It's like taking a candy from a baby. Uh, no, there's no problem infecting such a device. And it's very important to understand this because this is the basic for this attack. The user logs in, so they actually, we call it landmine attack because they actually planted the landmine. They, 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 what they did is that they installed malware in his home and just waited until he logs in. Once he logs in, it's very easy for a malware, for, for a Zeus malware that's, it's used for those uh, type of stuff to detect the user logs in. And without him knowing, the malware just steals, scrapes the entire information from the site. Now, Zeus is usually used for banking, right? But in the term, in the, in the case of Salesforce, you can, you can steal whatever information there. It might be the uh, uh, customer database, it might be um, the marketing plans, might be HR, it depends on the application. This is relevant to any SaaS application out there, okay? It's not specific to Salesforce. It's, and it's really, uh, the problem here is more fundamental as we'll see. And the really disturbing fact here is that this entire attack and this kind of attack goes completely without a trace. You have no trace, no trace in the company controls because this entire attack wasn't in the company control. It was a, 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 his wife's computer in his home, okay? And Salesforce itself doesn't have a log for this because the only log you'll see is that the user logged in. And the user did log in. He logged on weekends to work on his wife's computer. But what happened in the background, you won't know. And that's, and that's the attack. We call it the landmine attack because you plant landmines. What they actually did is just understood who is this employee, who are his uh, children and his wife, got to his computers. Um, it's very easy. Again, it's unmanaged, unpatched devices. At, our, at my home, it's very easy to get to my uh, computer if someone wants to. It's not complicated because I don't have a security team guarding my uh, computer and I actually, uh, maybe I have an antivirus, but it's definitely not updated. Uh, and you just wait for the right time. Once the employee, you need only once the employee to log in. And if you look at it from an organization standpoint, you need only one employee once to get this information and exfiltration is very easy. It is home computer. No one will ever notice the information is, uh, is taken from there. Um, so why is this attack interesting? So it's very simple. It's, I'm not uh, talking about a sophisticated attack. Uh, it's reusing a familiar tool that is usually used for banking. But as we saw in the uh, earlier example of, uh, of the um, uh, cloud payments, those can also be used as a Swiss Army knife for any, app, uh, any activity against websites credential theft or scraping content. It's really generic framework. And this attack is very effective. Although it's simple, it's relevant for all SaaS applications in almost all companies. And it's very stealth. This complete attack cycle went behind the eyes even of the most protected organization. Uh, even in logs in, in Salesforce. And just a note, I, we work with many companies and almost none of them actually knows what's going on in the logs. But even in the logs, you can't see any trace of this event. And the, the, the whole fact is that the attack vector is new. They, they attacked the wife's computer. And once you understand that my weakest link in my organization might, might not be in my organization, it becomes very hard to protect my organization. Uh, and so if you go back to the, to the notion of my SaaS organization, my SaaS organization is an organization that has many devices. Most of them are not patched. And I will never be able to to be sure that my organization, never, none of my users was accessing it from a, an unpatched, maybe compromised device. I have no idea because it's not my devices. So that's the first example. Um, I'll show you the second attack. Now this second attack is much a more for sophisticated one. I wanted to show you that it's not, it doesn't stop in simple attacks. They get much more sophisticated. 
the, uh, we call it the ice dagger attack because it's really, I would call it an elegant attack, okay? Uh, uh, it's like the ice dagger, which is the perfect crime. You commit the crime and the, and the weapon will never be found because it just melts away. Uh, so the Office 365 vulnerability uh, was patched by Microsoft a month ago. We've been working with them about six months until they understood the problem. We had to build a, a, a POC just to demonstrate how the attack works. And then they understood it and then they patched it. We work with them, they're great, but it takes a lot of time until un they understand these kind of attacks. It's, it's really new because let's see what happened there. So what we saw is we really found it even accidentally, okay? Because what happened was a user was opening documents from a, a, a weird location. Just his office was, he opened uh, documents from a, a, it seemed like a Tor server, and we didn't know what, so we just, we, we raised an alert, but the, when we tried to open this link, there was nothing there. We didn't know what's going on, so we just, we thought it's not interesting. And um, so after several times this occurred, we, uh, we tried to, to understand what's going on, and we looked at the traffic itself. And one of the uh, uh, members of the research group uh, looked at the traffic and saw a, a suspicious header. The header looked like it was a, a coming from SharePoint.com and it makes sense because there was not sh no SharePoint in the process. It's an office uh, opening a, a document from a server. SharePoint is not in the process at all. And from there we started investigating. We, we, we tried to uh, use Microsoft to help us and in the end it took, it took us a lot of time until we, we understood the attack. I, I'll show you. I'll show you the attack. Uh, this is the part of the POC we've built uh, for Microsoft. Uh, so, we upload a, a sensitive inform a document uh, to the SharePoint, okay? Uh, or the SkyDrive of the company. That's just for the sake of example. Um, great, so we upload the document. The only thing the attacker needs to do is something very simple. The attacker needs to send an email to the employee. Now, the, the crazy thing here is that the email is legitimate. The link in the email is legitimate. The document downloaded from the email is also legitimate. So there's nothing uh, not legitimate happening here on the employee device or in the employee network. Everything looks great. The, the price proposal looks great. You open the document. The document itself is great. Nothing looks out of ordinary, but so you can never detect anything here, and the link cannot be accessed afterwards. So it's really it's it's, it's that's why we call it the perfect crime. There's nothing you can you can see that happened during this process, but actually nothing is is right because what happened here is when the office application opened the document, it was tricked to believe that the server is actually SharePoint, and then it did something very simple. It took the Office 65 token that is kept inside Office applications and sent it to the server of the attackers, okay? Now, once you do it, this is much worse than any exploit ever seen because this en enables the attackers to get access to what we call the keys to the kingdom, right? Because now you can access any sensitive document and change it and read it and have persistent access to it and no one will ever know. It doesn't go through any of your controls. Uh, so what we saw here is a highly targeted email sent to the user. The user just opened the email and got the document. But in the background, what really happened was that the, I won't have time to go into the details, but what we see here is that the word, word sends the, uh, the user Office 365 token to the server of the attackers just after I masqueraded at SharePoint.com. So what's interesting here, this is an exploit. You will always have exploits, okay? But exploits in the SaaS era are much stronger. Uh, it's like, uh, we call it the holy grail because you don't need code execution here. You simply get the keys and you can do whatever you want with them. It's the ice dagger. It's the perfect crime because there's no trail. We, if you think about it, you can never see any trace of this attack. It was, there was no logs, no nothing. Um, even the vendors, even Microsoft that you, you worked with them, for so long about this, didn't understand the impact. They put this as high and not critical. And what was the reason? The reason was that it doesn't allow code execution, right? But you don't need code execution in the case of SaaS because you don't need, 
you get the identity. It's much stronger than current execution. It's like a whole attack in one single HTTP request. That's the attack. Um, and w what we feel here is that the, the, it's not about the exploit. There's something fundamentally different with SAS. And that's the third part that I, I'll quickly speak about. Uh, and what makes those attacks so unique? Uh, we spoke about the SAS organization. I hope it's still, it's still in your head. So the first thing that's fundamentally different is what we call defense in depth, okay? Defense in depth is a very basic security concept. We know that attacks have a lot of stages. Most attacks today are not caught in the first stage. Sometimes we catch them in the second or third stage. That's why a lot of security controls aim at, tech, at catching those attacks in different layers of attack, okay? But in the SaaS world, most of these layers are not relevant. Once I break in, I don't have to go through your company uh, controls. And then you won't have any chance to catch me. And, like, and those, all those, uh, uh, most investigations always start with, we detected an unusual access and started investigating and saw this and this. This won't happen in a SaaS attack because you don't have defense in depth. You don't have any layers. The second thing that uh, makes everything so easy in SaaS attacks is that SaaS breaks the security model in a very fundamental way. Because all of our security controls are built around this crunchy m, &M. Crunchy in the inside, very hard in the outside. But with SAS, everything is inside, outside. It, you can't really, you don't have any perimeters anymore. So most of the controls, all, almost all of the security controls we have today, either endpoint controls, network controls, application controls, that are not relevant. The endpoints in my SAS organization, remember, remember the SAS organization? It doesn't get any security. The endpoints in the, in the SAS organization don't get endpoint security. The network doesn't get network security. And the application don't get application security. And the third and most fundamental problem today with SAS security, and that's what makes everything even easier, is that no one feels responsible. And when I say that, I, I can turn the question to you. Um, you have the on-premise organization. We love the on-premise organization. We've put so much effort in building the security controls for the on-premise organization. But what about the SaaS organization? Sometimes we feel, okay, we outsourced the SaaS service, so we also outsource the security, right? But the truth is the vendors themselves are not responsible. They, we, they don't say it yet out loud. We, we work with them, so we know that they're doing a great job trying to do part of it, but it's, not, it's really not their responsibility. They write it only in their legal terms. We are not responsible for what's happening in your account. But it's not only this. Suppose you had an exchange admin. You wouldn't expect the exchange admin to be responsible for the entire security of the exchange. What if the Active Directory admin wasn't doing his job? The exchange will ultimately be compromised, right? So that's the case with Salesforce. There's SSO, the, and, and Salesforce sometimes is not responsible for the authentication. How can you expect Salesforce or any other SaaS vendor to be able to detect those attacks. They're not responsible for everything. Your infrastructure is your responsibility in the, in the meaning of your SaaS organization and how things interact in between. Um, and that's why the most fundamental problem is that we need to take control over our SaaS organization and understand that it's part of our organization. And that's my last slide. And I, I, if, I, if you have one takeaway from this, and I know it's a very short time, to grasp the, the, the difference here from regular attacks. But if you have one takeaway, it's that you should acknowledge you have an inner SaaS organization, okay? It's part of your organization and it needs attention and it needs to be protected. Don't leave it unprotected because if you will, then we will see a, a rise in SaaS targeted attacks because it's interesting for the attackers and it's ridiculously easy today, okay? It's easy to bypass those enterprise security. It's not, they're not relevant. They just use existing tools, and we, we saw some examples, there are many more.